Trafalgar Square in London. Beautiful big square. Uh, in the middle is this giant column of Horatio Nelson. Uh, he died at the, the Battle of Trafalgar, which is his British naval victory of the Napoleonic War in 1805. And the original plan actually was to put a full-scale replica of the Parthenon in the square, right? And they did that because, or they thought about doing that because at that time in England, they thought that we're the next Athens, right? We're the rightful torchbearers for freedom, just like the Athenian democracy was. So that's why they wanted to put the Parthenon there, right? See the connection between art and ideas. Uh, but they went with this column instead. Now, there's four pedestals all around the, the square. Uh, and they have different statues on them, different beautiful statues. But one of them was supposed to have a statue of William IV, but they never finished it. So this is empty. So what they do now is they have these modern artists put their own crap on this pedestal. Uh, they call it a plinth or something. And they, they, they put it up and they, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's beautiful. Like what? Look how different, look how stunning. Oh, it just captures the blah, 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 blah. That was nonsense. So here, the latest one was just unveiled the other day. We have a video of the unveiling. It's very exciting. Oh, I can't wait. Here it comes. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at it. It's, it's stunning. Oh, what it, I can't wait to see the... Uh. Woo hoo hoo. Did you hear the person? Did you hear the, woo hoo hoo. Uh, that right there is a uh, dollop of whipped cream with a cherry on top and a drone stuck on it. And on the other side is a big giant fly. You can see the fly on the left-hand side. Okay. Okay, that's a rotting culture. Now, they do this on this column. Uh, you guys, you have the next picture. This is, these are a bunch of other statues that they put up on this pedestal here. You can see they're all just ridiculous. And all of it, the intent, I want to be clear about this, the intent is the destruction of beauty, right? They say beauty's, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. No, it's not. Beauty is objectively true. There's symmetry, order, balance, proportion, context. Don't give me any of this, oh, it's interpretive. It depends on the experience of the viewer, blah, blah. No, it's total nonsense. And way too many people have fallen for this idea that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Because if once you start saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which people just say because it kind of rolls off the tongue and sounds nice, then you start thinking that truth is in the eye of the beholder. I think when people say that, I think what they're referring to is more like tastes or preferences, right? You can have a preference for something over the other. The example, example we've given before is the Capitol building or like a Japanese pagoda, right? You can have a preference over which you like more, but they're both objectively beautiful for objective reasons. But you can have a preference over one. But they're still beautiful, right? Modern artists, they think art is supposed to be ugly because they're supposed to challenge the idea of beauty. And art is anything that makes you feel. Uh, a two-year-old having a tantrum makes me feel. It doesn't make it art. Art, oh, art will make you feel. No. But what they try to do is they try to make you feel shock and disgust. And that's what the point of modern art is. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.